Hi everyone, today is December 29th, 2018. This is the Duel Assessment, your podcast for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. My name is Green Ranger. And I'm Deck Tech. And we're in the last week of 2018. And Konami has hit us with some big new announcements. We have the announcements for next month in Duel Links. There is going to be a new box released hours before 2019 kicks off. So they're just, you know, they're just canceling our events and you know, making us buy cards at the end of the year. And there's also uh, the Duelist Chronicles event this week that has new cards and also the card trader. So there's a lot going on. After a, a bit of a quiet month, I'd say, it hasn't been too eventful a month, but they're starting off New Year the right way with a lot of stuff to do. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, Deck Tech, where are you this week? Uh, yeah, so I thought that the holiday season meant, you know, with like days off and whatever, meant that I would be able to play more. Uh, but it turns out it was kind of the opposite because I had all these family obligations. Family was in town and prepping for, uh, we celebrate Christmas. So, you know, kind of cleaning up and prepping for that and then actually doing the Christmas. And, uh, and then once I got back to work after that, uh, work was a madhouse and I had something due yesterday, which was Friday. Uh, and I had three days to do it and it was probably more like a, five to eight day project or something. So, uh, basically long story short is I didn't play very much at all this week. I, I didn't even finish all of the, like normally, even when I'm light playing, I still do the events and stuff and just don't play PVP, but I haven't really been able to do that. Even I missed, uh, at least one of the, uh, the puzzles from last week. They're already oh, gone. Wow. I wasn't able to do them before they left. So that was a bummer. Uh, I did play a little bit of PvP because something kind of caught my eye they wanted to try out. And so in the little bit of time I had to play, I was doing the Banish Dino deck uh, that I saw on like Reddit or something. It's kind of made the rounds a little bit. Um, and the way that it works is there is the uh, the new Dino. I forget his name. I don't have my game Hydrex. open right now. Uh, what, what you, yeah. So uh, whenever that one's Banished you it could be resummoned and then you've got the a couple banish effects including the other dino you got me What's evil that? swarm salamandra yeah there we go that's teamwork guys uh evil swarm uh who you can banish a, a monster from your graveyard uh, up to twice a turn if you want to do them separately or if you have multiples and uh and buff him up so you use the Banish guy, you get free summons, you use, like, Sarcophagus and stuff, and uh, basically it's a pretty decent tempo deck. Um, obviously your guys are pretty big, uh, because they start fairly big, Evil Swarm's buffing itself, and you've got the Jurassic World out. Um, and so it trades okay and stuff, but it still just didn't feel like it really competes on the same level uh, as the decks that are doing all the special summoning, like the... Uh, masked heroes and the vampires and uh when you're on the ladder you don't face a ton of control decks because it's a little pricey for the normal ladder players so i haven't seen how it stacks up against that for the rest of kind of the top tier decks but it definitely felt like it wasn't quite as good as the vampires or the masked heroes which i did face a decent amount uh, but it is fun and so i might play more of that uh, unfortunately, my Rex is also max level, and the reason why I stopped playing Blue Eyes was because uh, Arcana was at max level, so it kind of felt wasteful to play it. So I might instead try to find something else. I still haven't gotten, for instance, Akiza's uh, skill to use my Junk Guy a uh, little bit oh, more. Right. So maybe I'll go back to trying to farm that once I get some time to play again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How awesome. about you? Yeah. yeah. In, in finishing the dinosaur thing, I I did try that for a couple of games, but my deck was likely horrible, and um, I think I won one game, but uh, it felt too clunky. Like I had a lot of hate true nades and anti magic arrows and things like that. And I just never drew those or whatever. Um, that's that was my take on the dinosaur deck. But and early this morning, not early this morning, like an hour ago, I hit <laughs> I hit legend two with. Uh, the vampire deck with the what gro grows in the graveyard skill. Um, I don't really have an ambition for King of Games. I just didn't play a ton this month, so I'm trying to get as many rewards as I can. I'm at 79 right now. Typically, I'd be past 100 or, on a normal month, but I guess, I don't know. I feel like playing this month, so I'm at 79. 
And earlier in the week, I actually bought through Rage of the Forest, which is the Sylvan box, once over for a second Hey True Nade, which I got. Uh, I spent all my, not all my gems, my extra gems, but then uh, I was able to replenish that uh, in time for the new box. So I'm um, not really shooting for King of Games. Tristan Vampires is, is done for now, and I'm just playing this uh, Synchro Summoning Vampire deck, which is a little better. It's funny you say that you're light with 76. I literally have 16 ranked wins <laughs> right now. So uh, <laughs> Half a game a day. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully I could get a few more in before the end of the month because, you know, to get those rewards. Otherwise, you're just leaving stuff on the table. But it feels like I don't good really thing, have yeah. enough time to just do all the things. Yeah. The good thing this month is the SR ticket kind of sucks. And I forget what the R was, but the SR is just that it's like a psychic uh, synchro guy. And I wasn't even using my tickets for that card. So it wasn't... It wasn't a big reward this month, so it's good, I guess. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, not a priority, yeah. I guess. All right, well, it is what it is. We'll see how... We'll, we'll see when we check in next week how I ended up doing. Yep. All right, we're going to talk about the Duel Links Meta Weekly 52... Or 51? 52, which happened on Thursday really fast. And it's important because this week, Banish Control kind of is vying with Vampires for Top Dog... I mean, they were named Tier 1, so it, it makes sense. They they did more successfully in the top 32. 10 out of 32 decks were a control deck, so there you go. Um, it's and also, they did take over... Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'll go. Uh, I was saying it's, it's also relevant because 52 means we've done it for a year now, right? About, right, right. Yeah, so a year of Duel Links meta tournaments, that's pretty awesome. Good job to everyone over there who's been putting them on and stuff. Yeah. I remember I looked at the first one this year. It was number one, so it is 52. It's been a year, so they've done it every week. Um, 10 out of 32 were a control deck, and even though three of the four were a banished control, there is a sneaky deck that took first place. A very fun and interactive sneaky deck. Yeah. And uh, emphasis on fun and interactive, if you're familiar with that, it is first place Oeda Juice Man. A show of nightmares, Silent Swordsman, and Silent Swordsman never really took off. But if you remember, it is a one-turn kill type deck. This one combines the Dark World cards. You've got Brow Huntsman, Dark World Dealings in Into the Void, and Magical Stone Excavation. Into the Void and Magical Stone Excavation were also bamboo cards. So you also have Broken Bamboo Sword, Cursed Bamboo Sword, and Golden Bamboo Sword. So. This is a first turn kill deck. It's not even one turn kill deck. It's like a first turn kill deck. Yeah, first attack turn, I guess, right? Yeah, because you have to attack with it. But yeah, definitely just an an OTK deck. Um, the the fun and interactive meme. I'm not sure how many people get that from here because it's a different game. But that comes from our Hearthstone roots, right there. Uh, basically, just you do your thing. Your opponent doesn't really do anything, and you win because this is. You know, you're just drawing your entire deck. Yeah, I remember... I don't think I had enough Into the Voids back then, but I definitely did use Magical Stone Excavation in my in my Bamboo deck, so that all fits. And uh, Golden Bamboo got uh, limited to one, and it still works out, I guess. So I, I guess congrats to this guy for building this deck and actually beating everyone, even if you don't like the, the way it happened. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> congrats for actually winning, yeah. I do wonder how this works, though. It seems like a very... Yeah, six, yeah. I mean, it clearly it did, but it just seems like a very uh, fragile combo in the meta right now where people can just Paleozoic your guy, right? Or the does... Silent Sword Slash says unaffected by opponent's card effects. So I guess that's how they get by it. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, my bad. I was looking at just the Swordsman because he's only unaffected by spells... Um, obviously I haven't faced this deck very often, so... Okay, right. well then the other problem is that they could just put guys into defense position, right? How does he attack directly? Hmm. I think, let's see. I'm not sure. I don't know either. I have seen versions that did do something to attack directly first, because it only has a thousand attacks, so you can do a, you know, a secret pass of treasures or whatever, but this one doesn't have right. that. Right. So, I don't know. It seems interesting. I don't think these tournaments are open deck lists, right? No. 
Yeah, because they always talk about like not saying who has what and whatever. So maybe whatever it is is in his sideboard. I note that the sideboard is missing um, in this little report, so maybe he's got some way to work around the hate or the play arounds in his sideboard. So we'll say oh, that's we'll the see. case. <laughs> Second place, Negdu Zap. This is the uh, typical uh, Synchro Banish Control deck with the Akiza skill. Uh, we have seen this type of deck before where they cut the uh, jugglers for some Junk Synchrons. A notable thing about this deck is that there's only one Dust Tornado. I've, I've seen some with two or three in the past. This only has one. They put in uh, Mirror Walls in place of it, I think. Yeah, um... Yeah, maybe. I also don't see enemy controller in every list. I think it should be in most lists anyway, because it's just very good. Uh, it's especially very good when you have the synchro guy. For obvious reasons, you can steal their thing and then use it as part of your tribute, so that's very powerful. Um, but not every version has the synchro or econ, and so that's one other thing to note. Otherwise, it's mostly just about standard and in fact standard enough that the next list is the exact same list yeah hideki bro has the same exact list he did know in the comments they forgot his sideboard so probably we could expect the sideboard to be different but we'll never know so it's the same exact deck list yeah one i guess we could talk about that um neg do zap sideboard which is here has a card i've never seen before scrap iron statue uh, so when a spell trap card that is already face up on your opponent's field activates its effect, destroy that card. Also, after that, set this card face down instead of sending it to the graveyard. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one junk monster in your graveyard, special summon in defense position, you can only use the effect once per turn. So that's kind of a cool card. It's like infinite counters to right. things like, uh, I guess, Amazonus and not really Sea Stealth because they get to protect their thing but similar cards, so that's kind of cool. And it obviously works with your Junk Synchron guy. I've seen this deck, I've seen this card in the computer with, uh, when you're facing Yusei, and he just keeps bringing it back. It's just like, this, duel, this auto-duel is taking forever. <laughs> but, yeah. Sometimes you just have to take over for the auto-dueler and just finish out the duel. You're like, what are you doing, guy? Get out of here. That's what happens with GX Chronicles. He couldn't beat one of the the final bosses forever with a fur hires deck, and it was annoying. Like I, I had to come in after three losses or something. Yeah, I have to step in. And third place, Edu sixteen. This is a sealed tombs Amazonist version of Banished Control. You do have six cards that flip things face down. So there's three floodgates, three Paleozoics, a uh, twenty four card deck. Yeah, this one seems more grindy. They don't have the synchro, so it seems. Uh, more grindy. And you do have Big Burn in the side deck, which is a card I expected to see at some point, and finally came, so there you go. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I I guess you can run 24 because you have the, the tutor effects and a lot of redundant cards, and maybe you feel like you have to run 24 to make up for your cards that tutor cards out of your deck so that you're not behind on cards when you in the games where you have to go for the deck out win. So it's an interesting uh, deck building choice. I, I feel that. We've got two also notable is there's two princesses, one onslaught and zero of the, uh, the reanimation card. I forget what it's called, but so that means you only have one target for your two princesses. Sometimes you're going to whiff, uh, but this is like the minimalist, um, Amazon is packaged, only intended to use it as kind of a control option. So it's kind yeah. of cool. That's the meta weekly. Um, another news, Duelings Meta updated their tier list just a little bit. So what did they change in the tier list? Yeah, so this time they the only change is that Spellbooks has been dropped off uh, completely. So it's removed from the list. It used to be tier 3. Everything else remains the same. Which means Control Vampires are Tier 1, Mass Heroes Tier 2, um, Blue Eyes, where'd it go? Blue Eyes, Buster Blader, Fur Hires, and UA are Tier 3 now, in their estimation. 
Uh, they've been updating these more frequently now, so I'm not sure if their plan is just to do it every week or if they're still just doing it whenever it updates, but, you know, the meta's been shifting a little bit more recently than it has in the past. So either way, it's kind of cool. We've got the link here if you want to check it all out and a little bit of their explanations and stuff for why they're moving things the way they are. And just as a disclaimer, they take into account torment things. So for people like us, we still see plenty of spellbooks. It does, it's inconsequential for that. It's not like they left a uh, legend or a platinum. Um, they're just not in tournament. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. This list is both um, designed for like tournament choices, so it's rating decks based on how well they're expected to perform in tournaments, and also it is based on tournament performance. Uh, so decks get higher ratings if they do well in tournaments. That, of course, makes sense because there's usually a pretty good correlation between past performance and future performance in the same like setting. But all of that is to say that, like you said, it's not necessarily the uh, closest tied to what your latter uh, experience is going to be like. So sometimes that helps and sometimes it doesn't. And especially with um, more expensive decks like Control, you're not going to see a ton of that just because people don't have the cards for the banished control decks um whereas the cheaper decks will tend to live on um or the decks you know that people just the decks that people gravitate towards and then they've invested some time and energy and sometimes money into it some they like to hold on to them a little bit longer than maybe these like semi-pro type players do all right so we left us we left ourselves plenty of time to talk about the new cards from the new box revolution beginning which releases about you know five hours or so before the new year uh, comes, and um, so we, we should expect a Tuesday at some point, a Tuesday or Monday. Let's track of the day. It's Monday. It's Monday at some point, thirty first. And it's important to note that this is the first box to have reprinted cards. So there are actually five reprinted cards. They're the last five cards in the box: Fabled Arustos, Fabled Diff. Uh, Karakuri Ninja Model seven seven four nine Nanashik, that's one that's one card. Kwaki Meru Boulder and Karakuri Anatomy. These cards were from uh, Valiant Souls or Gaia Genesis. Yeah, I'm not sure like what what happened here. Like, did they run out of cards, or did they just not want people to fetch for these cards? Uh, they thought they were useful, so they reprinted them. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we'll ever know. I doubt they will specifically tell us maybe the sales on those other boxes were uh, short, but I don't think so because Valiant Souls did pretty well, I thought. Um, maybe the other one, though. But it, it, maybe they just kind of wanted to make it so that you could build these complete archetypes by just buying through this box, which kind of makes sense. Um, it's kind of a pain when you want to build a new deck and there's a lot of cool tools in one box, but then you need to buy from like three other boxes also just to get this one specific piece of the thing as well. So I don't know. It would all be easier if they just let us like craft individual cards, like most other card games do. So, oh well. It's, Yu- it's, it's Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> yeah. They don't, they don't feel like that. Uh, another point just before people, you know, tweet us and call us stupid and write in. Uh, we we're talking about this is the first box that's re- like normal box that's reprinting another normal box. We know, of course, right. that there were the reprint boxes that, uh, I guess, pre-printed cards maybe um, or reprinted old cards as well. So we, we are right. aware. The structure decks also do that. This is a box that took from another box. <laughs> that's yeah. the only way to say it. Yeah. Right. All right, let's go over the URs and SRs. In its entirety, Junk Destroyer, 8-star Warrior Synchro, 2600-2500, requires Junk Synchron and another tuner, other tuners. When this card is Synchro Summoned, you can target cards in the field up to the number of non-tuner monsters used for the Synchro Summon and destroy those cards. So, this is just another... I mean, with Synchros, we're kind of a broken record. It's kind of another card to put into your Synchro Collection especially since Junk Synchron is very popular with Armodities, so in the event you get 8 stars worth of monsters, this is a good card to use. Yeah, and 8 stars isn't even that hard when you're already going for a 5 stars. Like, if you have Armodities out, then you get another Junk Synchron. You can summon this fairly easily. And 
uh, I think this isn't one that you like build around. It's just one, like you said, that you throw in. So you want a one of of this guy probably just on, you'll probably use it, I don't know, once out of every 20 or maybe even 50 games. You're not going to use it every game, but sometimes it's just going to win you the game because you get to clear off one or two of their things and also get a big swing with your fairly big guy, 2,600. Not big enough to attack into Anki or Blue Eyes, which is slightly problematic, but still a decent enough guy. Bigger than the vampires, right? Typically. Yeah, so that's all you need. Arakuri Shogun Model Zero, Zero, Bure. Machine Synchro... 2600, 1900, one tuner, and one, and the non tuners have to be machines. When this card is synchro summoned, you can special summon one Karakuri monster from your deck. Once per turn, you can target one monster on the field, change its battle position. So it's not too flashy, but it's also another card you can add to a machine deck for your extra deck. Um, it seems to fit with the Morphtronics because they like to flip positions. Uh, it doesn't work for the gear just because they have to be like set and set special, uh, flip summoned and things like that. But this is a Karakuri card. If that if that archetype works out, here it is, another monster for that. Yeah, I think the the big problem is that this is one, in, unlike the Junk Destroyer, this one requires you to build kind of a, a specific deck about it. You need uh, machines, of course, but also it gets most of its value when you have it in a Karakuri deck specifically. And I'm not sure if that's going to become a thing. So this one, I think, is probably less... Um, Less ubiquitous. Ancient Sacred Wyvern. Seven star fairy synchro 2100 2000 requires a light tuner. While your life points are higher than your opponent's, this card gains attack equal to the difference. While your life points are lower than your opponent's, this card loses attack equal to the difference. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, pay a thousand life points, special summon this card. So you can't really tell with the card text. You had to do some extra research to find out what was going on here. But this card's attack is going to keep changing throughout the whole game. As long as life points change, its attack will just keep changing. Um, It requires a light tuner, so you're going to have to look through what tuners you have that can special summon themselves and things like that. But I feel like this could be abused. It could be a huge attack. Yeah, so um, I was thinking one fun thing you could do with it is Aegis of Gaia, which gains you 3,000 uh, life points. And then obviously the downside is when that card, uh, when the Aegis goes away, then you lose the life points again. But I'm thinking you can attack in with this, maybe a direct attack, maybe attacking over their thing. And, and once the uh, coast is clear or behind an anti-magic arrows or something, uh, then you can do Aegis of Gaia and OTK, or not really OTK, but, you know, swing in for a huge amount, and uh, there's lots of other life point manipulation things as well. Um, it, even, like, losing life is with this for a 1,000 to get it back is sometimes relevant because you can use it to activate skills or whatever. So I think this is a card that could, I agree, it could definitely be abused somehow, um, I'm not sure if it will be worth it, if it'll be like the most efficient thing to play. And so if it's not, then it won't get played because just because you can do something cool, if you could do something better, uh, the better thing's probably going to stand out more on the ladder, but there's probably going to be some fun YouTube videos or something at the very least, and maybe some broken things. Um, you could also maybe also just use it for farming or whatever. Right. Underworld Fighter Balmung. This is notable as it's the first four-star synchro in Duel Links. Uh, War- Dark Warrior Synchro, 2100-800. No specific tuning requirements. When this card is destroyed by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, target one level four or lower monster in your graveyard except for this one special summon it. So, it, it it's good against cards like Widespread Ruin or Sakuretsu Armor that uh, destroy it so you can get a thing back. Uh, you can actually set up a combo of Death Counter Blow. You could destroy this guy and then uh, kill them with a 1900 if you have that again. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't, uh, I couldn't figure out the Death Counter Blow, Death Counter Blow thing. Uh, it turns out you need two of this guy for it to go infinite, right? You summon one, and then you get, uh, I guess you could summon both because the first one would go into the graveyard from 
the death counter blow. And so you attack in, death counter blow says whenever a monster attacks directly, destroy it. So do that, attack in directly, it gets destroyed. The other, the next one attacks in directly, it brings back the first one and, you know, they keep doing an infinite loop like that. Uh, probably not going to be super relevant because we only have 4,000 life points in this game anyway, <laughs> and so two attacks is lethal, but that's kind of cool still. Also, this guy looks like a fancy Japanese uh, Black Panther, so that's kind of cool, and okay, I yeah. thought his sword sheath at first was an iPhone, so there's lots of fun stuff going on here. <laughs> He's filming him killing people, that's, that's what's going that's, on. That's what it is, yeah. Um, the Fabled Sir Burl. This is a two-star beast tuner, uh, part of the Fabled set, 1,400. If this card is discarded to the graveyard, special summon it. So, in all in all essence, this is a free two-star tuner. There's a lot of cards to discard. The whole Fabled set discards, and you can even use the Tricky. So you, you throw this away with the Tricky, and then you have two guys uh, that are special summoned. They're not even normal summoned. So you could play another guy... And it's seven stars at least were right there, so pretty good card. Yeah, and it's a light, which is sometimes relevant, including for that other guy that we just went over, the Ancient Wyvern, so uh, also relevant. Like you said, you can use it for synchros as well as just regular tribute summons uh, when you do that tricky thing, and then you have uh, two pieces to fuel your, uh, your two tribute guy. Uh, synchros kind of tend to be the way going forward instead of tributes. Tributes have never been super strong in this game. Um, but, you know, well, actually, they have very early on, they were pretty strong in the game, but it's been a while. They're with vampires. Yeah, yeah, that's true, but that's not, I don't know, that doesn't feel like a ramp deck to me. I don't know. Well, I guess it kind of, I guess it kind of is. Okay. Yeah. But this card's pretty good. Yeah. I can agree on that, yeah. Um, Fabled Grimrow, four star light fiend, seventeen hundred a thousand. If you control a face of Fabled monster, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard. Add one Fabled monster from your deck to your hand, except for Fabled Grimrow. So, this is a. There's a lot of tutor effects in this set. I've noticed, and this can tutor for any of the Fabled monsters. Yep. Um. Obviously, it's only good in a Fabled deck, so it kind of just depends on how good the Fabled monsters are. Um, gonna have to look we're gonna have to see how that pans out um I, tutor effects are always good if the thing they're tutoring for is something that you want so that's kind of just what it comes down to this also has a decent body though so i guess it'll be good on its own if you want to it like for instance if you already have whatever you're getting and then you're just kind of trying to close the game out or whatever or you need a tempo play then it works for that purpose as well the fables are kind of weird they're all like they're all light fiends, which is, or some of them are animals, I guess. That's a little different. But light fiends, I'm trying to think about if there's any, like, buffs or anything like that. Power of the Dark, Power of the Dark doesn't care about attributes, just uh, the type, right, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I forget it. Uh, Doom Caliber Knight, 4-star Dark Fiend, 1900, 1800. Cannot be special summoned. During either player's turn, if a monster effect is activated, tribute this face of card, negate the activation. If you do, destroy that monster. This is possibly a chase card, I think. Um, you've seen some decks have cards like Skullmeister in the sideboard to negate the graveyard effects, and this would just do it to anything on the board. So it's better, it's strong. Um, it seems like a Banish Control type card right away. Yeah, I think... You're onto something there. It feels like um, some sort of control. Maybe the banish control. Maybe like the more board centric ones, uh, like kind of old style control, um, might see a little bit more of a comeback. It just seems like a powerful card. It's got a good body as well as a good effect, and so that's kind of the exactly the type of card that has always seen some play. Miracle Fusion, Spell Card. Fusion Summon 1 Elemental Hero. Fusion Monster from your extra deck by banishing fusion materials listed on your side of the field or graveyard. So, there's a lot of Elemental Heroes. We're not going to go through them, but they were mostly not played at all. And this is this is obviously better than Polymerization because you could reuse the things from the graveyard, which is okay. 
games, which isn't it helps because some of them have impossible fusing requirements, and this helps in that regard. But you made a point about gem knights comparing this to gem knights. Yeah. So what this makes me want to do is play Grasslux Greener, right, to dump a bunch of things into my graveyard so that I then have this big pool of resources that I can use this card for um, and summon whatever I need to. Uh, the problem with that, though, is that you might dump this card with Grass's Greener. So what you need some way to get it back, or you need to wait or draw it first or whatever. And uh, that's unlike the Gem Knights, which their fusion card you can get back from the graveyard, which I think is a very, very important part of their fusion card. And so this feels like it's just a worse version of Gem Knights because you can't do that core, powerful mechanic. Right. Maybe there's a skill where you could wind up with this in your hand, like Spell Specialist or Show of Nightmares or something, I don't know. Yes, yeah, spell specialist. You might end up with just more grasses greener back in your deck, right? <laughs> you don't want <laughs> I don't know that. How it works. Um, but maybe the yeah. I mean, it's possible. I might be wrong. There might be something playable here, but it feels like a worse gem knights. And gem knights, of course, have always been kind of a a tier four deck. You know, yeah. never quite on the top tier. Good enough to play on the ladder, um, but not definitely not one of the top tier decks. And this feels like a worse version of that, so I'm not sure if it'll even be good enough to play on the ladder. And the last you are a shrink, quick play spell, target one face of monster on the field. The original attack of that monster is halved until the end of this turn. So, you know, right away this looks worse than certain cards like Mirror Wall and things like that. But there is utility you could use on your own monsters, on their monsters. It is a quick play. Um... And you could use it offensively or defensively. Um, yeah, just a lot of things you could do with this card. Yeah, it seems like a at least a decent card. Uh, you pointed out a tricky use of like saving your the guy that you love from widespread ruin for a turn. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw maybe some tricks uh, using the Amazon Swordswoman, you know, to just take a bunch more damage, or I guess. It wouldn't be a bunch more. It'd be like 750 more, but yeah. uh, but a bit more damage at least. Um, and that could kind of make up for Massive Morse being limited. I don't know. Now that it, now that I've said it out loud, 750 doesn't seem like a lot, so probably not. Yeah. But but it's something. You know, sometimes that's all you need to get in to win. So uh, this will maybe see like a little bit of play. It's kind of one of those utility cards that uh, isn't like OP, so it's not obviously going to go into a ton of decks like for instance enemy controller did but it's still a very utilitarian card that'll probably see at least a little bit of play over the course of you know its life in the game yeah all right so we're moving on to the srs iron chain dragon this is a very lightly represented archetype in this box six star synchro dragon synchro 2500 1300 no tuning requirements uh specifically you can remove from play all Iron Chain monsters from your graveyard to have this card gain 200 attack for each card removed until the end phase. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, send the three top cards from their deck to the graveyard. So the Iron Chain's mill. This is a six-star synchro if that fits your deck. It, mi it mills a little. <laughs> it hits. It has okay attack. Yeah, my thinking on this is it's an okay attack um, that... It's another one that you would kind of just throw into your extra deck if you have room for it, um, because every once in a while you'll get it out, and every once in a while those top three cards off your opponent's deck will win you the game, where the damage wouldn't, because you're in a you know a grindy matchup, and you're each down to your last couple cards, and then boom, you can use this to mill your opponent out and win. Uh, it's another one that I don't think you're going to summon very frequently, if at all, uh, in most ladder climbs, but it's a good thing to have in your toolbox if you have room for it, for just in case you need that last little bit to put you over. Yeah, in Duel Links, I find myself in a lot of, uh, more often than I expected in situations where we just pass until the game ends. I see, I, I do that a lot, I don't know why. That's interesting. I don't usually have uh, situations like that. Um, but you're playing vampires, which pulls things at the advantage yeah you yeah the advantage in that, it pulls yeah. things from your deck and your opponent's deck so maybe that's why you're kind of bringing both players closer to uh the deck out 
And I don't get it because they don't do anything either, so they just lose. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't understand that. Like, if you're gonna be drawing faster, you're gonna, ha- you have to do something. And they just pass every turn. I don't get it. I don't, I don't yeah, know. some players aren't the best players. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Fabled Ragin, five star synchro, um, feet light fiend twenty three hundred eighteen hundred. One Fabled Tuner, and the non-tuners could be anything you want. When this card is Synchro Summoned, if you have one or less cards in your hand, you can draw until you have two cards in your hand. So, this is a very easy Synchro. As mentioned, the Cerebrus or Cerebral comes out for free, so that's a two right there, and then you just get three easily. They have a lot of other cards that could cheat themselves out pretty quick. So you basically activate Pot of Greed with this card, or just one one card draw. So it's and they discard all the time, so they definitely need to refuel, and that seems very core for this fable archetype. Yeah, it seems like the archetype uh, we were talking about it before the show. They like to kind of cycle through their deck quickly, put a bunch of guys out on the board, and then from there, uh, the swarm mentality is inherently a little bit weaker in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh than in other games because you're you still have to attack over or get through their biggest guys somehow, but. There's definitely a lot of value to uh, swarming moderately sized guys. I mean, 2300's not nothing. Um, and once you do that, you can use tie that binds, or you can use you know some other way to just gain an advantage, like econs or something, and just use that to push through and win. Uh, this seems like a pretty good way to do that, and it will probably be part of a fabled you know, a, an important part of whatever Fable deck ends up coming out, if one does, because it seems pretty solid. Yeah, this guy's attack is actually just right. It it fights with Armadides uh, to a tie, and it beats the the four-star zombies with the field. So it mm-hmm. seems like just right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's a pretty good card. Uh, if you're playing the archetype, this is probably one of the reasons why. Also, I like that his art looks like he's saying word to your mother. Wait, why do you say that? Doesn't he look like he's posing like... It, that's that's a lyric from a specific song, though, right, I think? Yeah. I feel like it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's another one from... There's another one from Valiant Souls. That looks really like he's, he's cheesing up something. <laughs> <laughs> the other SR. Yeah. Um, This guy looks more... Uh, He's not doing that, but Fabled Raven, SR, Fiend Tuner, 1300-1000 2-star tuner. Once per turn, you can discard any number of cards. If you do, this card gains 1 level and 400 attack for each discarded card until the end of this turn. This could be the one that puts the whole archetype into competitiveness. Um, So you could discard as many cards as you want, and each Fabled has an ability... Uh, for a discard effect. So there's going to be multiple things going on. You have to know how much you're tossing. This guy's a tuner. His stars are going to change. He's going to gain attack. But there's no downside to just pitching one or pitching like all your cards in your hand. So there is a lot of flexibility on this card. It it just does a ton. It feels like it does so much. Yeah, you can pitch your whole hand and then draw two with the last guy and... Seems pretty solid. Um, did you look up, because it just occurred to me, in the rules, if there's a limit to levels and if this affects that? Because I know there's a functional limit. You can see it on the card. You can only fit, I don't know how many, but... 12? I don't know. <laughs> something like that, stars on it. Um, but I wonder if in the rules there's any limitation to that and that if there is, if that's even like a cap or if that's just like whatever the limit is meaning if that would prevent you from discarding more than whatever the number is, 10 cards or something, which yeah. is probably not too often going to be relevant because, you know, we're playing usually with 20 to maybe up to 30, but mostly around 20 decks, 20-card uh, 20 decks. Uh, so pitching 10 is going to be pretty extreme anyway. Um, but it's possible, you know. I, but the first thing that came to my mind when I saw this guy was every once in a while you'll see a Reddit post of someone who's built some deck where they've just drawn their entire hand, and you can see the hand goes all the way across the bottom of the screen, and then like you have to scroll back and forth to get to the cards you want and whatever. 
uh, my thought was like, hey, if you're doing that, you might as well play this guy and attack in for whatever it is, you know, uh, 8,000 or something. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you're allowed to do that, which we don't know offhand, then that's another kind of cool, probably niche, but kind of cool use. So a very good card. Arakuri Komachi Model 224 Nanishi. Uh, machine Tuner, 0 attack, 1900 defense. Uh, like all Karakuris, this card must attack if able. When it's face up, when this face-up card is selected as an attack target, change its battle position. While this face-up card is on the field, once per turn during the main phase, you can normal summon one Karakuri in addition to a normal summoner set. So it's a ramp card. Um, and the goal is to synchro summon the beret in one turn. And there's also support cards like cash cache, so you could know which one to get um, to ramp up on the board. Yeah, so obviously it has, you know, with zero attack and the requirement that it attacks, that's not a good time. So what you really want to do is you really want to play this to use it as the fuel to summon uh, something that requires a tribute or synchro summon. So you either play this and then uh, another card that you will then use the two of them to synchro, or you play this and then tribute it um, as just a normal summon or some other use of tributing, like an econ or whatever. So this uh, it's a very it's a strong, really strong utility card that you don't want to just play. You have to have like a plan for it and a deck built around it. And I think pretty obviously you're going to if you're playing this in your deck, but, you know, that's something to point out just in terms of the card's overall usability. Yeah. And there's a... Yeah, go ahead. uh, Nothing important. I was going to say this is one... I love the art on this guy. Or girl. Uh, Or robot. Robot Geisha. Yeah. Yeah. With gears on the... (laughs) <laughs> yeah i love it it's so good because these cards all have good art I, I like these art yeah 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 they're cool they're kind of like steampunk japanese robot things and and i just love it it's cool yeah. stuff very much my aesthetic card art overall sucks but these guys are an exception <laughs> pretty much yeah yeah this one in particular though i i don't know yeah. i just love it it's hilarious Karakuri Merchant Model 177 Inashichi, uh, Inashichi sure. uh, Machine 500 Attack 1500 Defense. This card must attack if able when it's uh, selected as an attack target, switch its battle position. Change it to defense mode. When this card is normal summoned, add one Karakuri card from your deck to your hand. So this is another a tutor card, but for this archetype, you could seem to tutor out the, sp- the spell cards, the trap cards, or the monster cards with the Karakuri. Yep, tutor effects are really good. This will almost certainly see play in this deck if it is a deck. Has the same right. problem, of course. Uh, 500 attack is super low, and if you must attack with it, then you're going to take a lot of damage and a huge backswing, so instead you want to get rid of this guy somehow. Um, use it for something so that you don't have to do that, preferably. Right. I'm looking at some of their cards from Valiant Souls. There's, they're all quick plays. There's one that adds 500 attack and 1500 defense. There's one that adds 1000 attack. And uh, there's one where they swap attacks or something with gold dust. So. Yeah. Something you could do. Yeah, I don't know. I understand it. it. It seems like the idea is that if your opponent has nothing on the board, then you get a little chip damage in, and then you get switched to defense position, so you don't take a lot on the backswing. But that requires them to have an empty board, so you have to have some sort of removal. And in this version of the game, we're not playing with Regekis and stuff, so you know it's less common for them to have nothing on the board. Uh, except on your first turn, then you get a free one, I guess, because you can't attack anyway. So you might as well play it, and then you're not going to take a lot on the backswing because of their ability. So that's kind of... that might be just like the easiest use right there. Uh, yeah. in addition to just the ones where you're going to use them to synchro or tribute or whatever. Huaki Meiru Rook Lord. 7 star warrior, 2800 to 2200. Uh, like any Kowaki Meiru, you need to sh- send uh, Iron Core from the hand or grave- to the graveyard or reveal a warrior monster from the hand. 
You can tribute summon this card by tributing one Koaki Meiru monster. When this card is normal summoned, remove from play a Koaki Meiru in your graveyard to destroy up to two cards your opponent controls. So up two, so one or two cards. Um, this is like a this is just like Maximus. You see, you saw the deck a little bit because it could just win, and this one could destroy two cards. Yeah. Yeah, this guy seems really good. Not quite as good as I thought when we were reviewing it because I missed the part where to activate its ability you have to remove from play a Kawaku, uh, Kawaki Meiru card, uh, unfortunately. I thought that it had the normal downside of you have to get rid of a card, but then once you just tribute it, no matter what, you get the destroy 2, which would have been awesome. You could have been able to use it in pretty much anything. Um, as it stands, you probably pretty much only use it in the Kawaki Meiru decks but maybe you could do like a mini package of it or something uh to use in other stuff as well not exactly sure but very powerful card uh clearing the way for a beat stick of 2800 that's just good stuff right there and there's a lot of solid warriors so that portion of revealing a warrior type from your hand that's not really a big downside either you could just double summon the kowaki meiru you just used and just do it in one turn i guess yeah yeah, you could do that too. Shield Crush. Spell card. Target one defense monster on the field. Destroy it. Very basic card. It has... It could kill some sets right away that are annoying. Uh, it works with the card Curry Synchro because that switches fields. And you can use it with any popular card uh, that switches things into defense mode. So Econ, Paleozoic, Floodgates, Fear Kribo, Windstorm, Pulse Mines. Yeah. Yeah, tons of those, lots of good stuff. Um, it seems like it's kind of frequently going to be an inherent two-for-one because you've yeah. just used your Paleozoic or Econ or whatever, uh, and sometimes you're not going to want that. Sometimes you just attack into whatever you just floodgated, but sometimes they kind of just stay there for a long time, or you're only using a Sphere Karibo to save yourself like a bit of damage or whatever. So, you know, that seems pretty solid. I think we already have... Do we have the nobleman who gets rid of set guys? Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, it just doesn't see any play because prior to, I, I mean, I guess it pops up every once in a while, but there's not a ton of set cards in this game in most metas, uh, so that guy never really saw much play. But this seems a little more utilitarian to me um, because it doesn't have to be set, and so you can maybe use it a little bit more frequently, even though it's slightly less powerful um, in terms of just overall power when it goes off. I think the extra utility might be just enough to get this to see play. So this seems like a pretty decent card that has a solid chance of seeing some play to me. I just realized that the card in this art is the Millennium Shield, one that has 3,000 defense. Oh yeah, that's funny. Shot right through it. Yeah, just get it. It's crushed. Kind of. Power Curry Cash Cache. This is a spell card. Select one face of Kara Curry monster you control. Add one level four or lower Kara Curry from your deck to your hand and change the power position of the selected monster. So this tutors any of the monsters that you can get of the merchant, which you probably want to switch to the defense anyways. Um, and this also has synergy with the anat- Kara Curry Anatomy, which lets you draw two cards. Uh, take You take less damage, basically, with this card. Yeah, yeah, it seems really powerful in the archetype. Like you said, it undoes the downside of requiring you to attack, which is good, and it's a tutor. So, like we've said a million times, also very good, just in its own right. So, solid card. Diamond Core of Koaki Meiru, spell card. Add one Koaki Meiru card from your deck to your hand, except for Diamond Core. You can banish this from your graveyard for the rest of the turn. Koaki Meiru monsters you control cannot be destroyed. So... This kind of does the same thing the Iron Core does, but it's better because it lets all of your monsters survive for that one turn. Um, this this could make the archetype something. I feel like the Iron Core was always... I mean, obviously it was a hindrance, but this could make it work, I think. Cool. I don't really have a ton of faith in the archetype, but I do really like that guy that we were just talking about a little bit ago. So uh, maybe this plus that other guy will be enough to bring it back and kind of make it a thing. So... Yeah, maybe. We've got two really good trap cards coming up. Synchro Material, a normal trap. Select one face-up monster your opponent controls. If you synchro summon this turn, you can use 
the selected monster as synchro material. You cannot conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this card. So I noted that this was a you noted that this was like soul exchange, but this is a trap which I think works against it cuz there's no point in doing this during your opponent's turn when you can't synchro summon unless there is a card that you could just do it on your turn on their turn, but I don't think there is. And this makes it vulnerable. But I feel like this is important for making Synchro Summons its dedicated deck, if there is such a thing. That's interesting, because I was thinking you could also use it to uh, so that any deck can run a Synchro sideboard, and now you have this, you have Econ, you have lots of ways to use your opponent's cards um, to do your Synchro Summons. And this one is especially fun because... You can use their uh, their tuner. You, it doesn't say you need a tuner, and then you use their other guy as the other part. It says you this can is the use other part. The... Hmm? I think this counts as the other part. Oh wait, synchro material is that? Does that count the tuner? That's uh, yeah. That's a good question. Oh yeah, I I kind of just assumed it was either part of it. I don't know. Um, Some, I think those are yeah. I think this counts. As... <laughs> Let's say it's both. Let's say it's both. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, it is a it is a cool card. I think um, I'm not sure if it'll see play, but we've gotten to the point where deck lists are so tight. There's so many good, just good cards that a card needs to just be great or have a specific synergy in the deck. So maybe you're right. Maybe it only sees play in dedicated synchro decks. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but it does seem pretty solid. Uh, like you said, a little bit worse than Soul Exchange but a little bit better in that mostly synchro summons are a little bit stronger these days um, than tributes. So that's kind of where I'm landing on it. Okay. Unending Nightmare, Continuous Trap. You can pay 1,000 life points to target one face-up spell or trap on the field. Okay, I didn't read the face-up when I looked at this card. (laughs) Face-up cards, spell or trap on the field, destroy it. You can only activate this effect of Unending Nightmare once per chain. So, why don't you talk about this card? Because I thought it was all spells and traps. I didn't realize it was face up only. Okay, yeah, I tried to get you there on the notes. Um, the yeah, so you can use it. it. Obviously, it's good for controlling the back row. It's not perfect in that uh, you can't just use it infinitely to clear everything, but it does work pretty well. Uh, there's a few solid choices. Uh, it also works well, though, with cards like Hey Trunade that people will try to play around by f- flipping their stuff face up. Um, of course, they would know that because you have to flip face up to avoid getting Hey Trunade yourself. But it also just shuts down anything that's based around any sort of continuous uh, spell or trap, right. um, including fields, of course, uh, which aren't continuous but are, you know, essentially the same, and. Uh, It's just pretty, it seems pretty solid. Any sort of reusable back row control seems pretty solid. And even though the life will often be a downside, it can sometimes kind of be an upside because you can activate skills or, you know, whatever sort of tricks you want to do with your life points. And the last thing I want to point out is that you do not have to target uh, an enemy card. It says any card. So there are a few spells and traps that you can play on your side and then target with this um, to do some fun stuff like gain life, draw cards, uh, destroy enemy monsters, any of that type of stuff. Yeah. So this, as it stands, uh, good against pretty good against vampires because that hits two of their cards. Uh, pretty good against UAs because that hits two of their cards. Um... Amazon also, SNC Stealth, my my children, they both get hit by it. Less sure. SNC Stealth, because then that's kind of just requiring them to bounce a guy, but it's possible. Um, I was going to go somewhere else. I <laughs> forgot it. Um, this is pretty good with Bandit. Mm-hmm. You just destroy the face-up ones and you steal the remaining one. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I think it's, it's one of my favorite cards in the set. You're... It's one of those cards, though, that you don't need a full playset of, right? Because you only need one yeah. in most cases, um, and then you just keep using it. And so frequent, like, second one that you'll draw will often be dead card. And so you're going to want 
it in a deck, it's probably best in some sort of deck where you can pitch your extra cards or you'd maybe only just run one in your deck anyway and just hope you draw it at some point. And, you know, kind of like people do uh, with some of their back row control cards now. I don't know. Overall, it seems like a solid card that will probably see some play in the right meta or right deck at some point, but you probably don't want a ton of them. So it's a slight bummer that it's an SR because you know you're going to end up with a, a few if you're buying through the set. Yeah. The one card that keeps in check, obviously, is Anki, so... Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Also, it keeps itself in check, right? If your opponent has one and you have one, and then you can destroy theirs or vice versa. And so, um, it'll never get like crazy. And it obviously kind of depends on the meta because you you need there to be important face up spells and traps for this card to be important. Um, cards that stay on the field as well, not just ones you just play. So. Um, it's it's going to be a meta dependent card, and I don't think there's probably any chance that it's going to like break the meta. Um, but I do think it's a solid card that'll pop up every once in a while in the in the right metas and right decks. Right. All right. So we're going to talk about now the four main archetypes of the box: the fabled or fabled, um, fabled Valkyrius is a twenty nine hundred attack synchro. Once per turn, you can discard one Fiend monster to draw a card. So this goes along with the engine of them discarding for effect, drawing a card. So, there you go. Cool. Yeah, works with, like, the um, the Dark World and all that type of stuff. So, right. yeah, it kind of just goes with the whole theme of the archetype. So it makes sense to talk about that when we're talking about the archetype generally. This card looks really... A bizarre, the fabled Kudabi. It's a four-star beast synchro. It gains these effects based on the number of cards in your hand. If you have zero cards in your hand, it cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. If you have three or more, destroy this card during the end phase. Very interesting card. You can just stay on the board forever when you have zero cards. Yeah, yeah, it seems like a solid thing. Um, sure, decent works with the archetype and everything. Uh, where's the next one? Fabled Kushano. Uh, tuner. You can discard one fabled monster to the graveyard except for Kushano to add this card from your graveyard to your hand. So this card ability activates while in the graveyard. So um, it's a tutor card, sort of. No, wait. It's not a tutor card. Well, you could just discard any fabled you want to the graveyard and add this from the graveyard to your hand. It's a tuner. I don't know. There's a reason for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it gives you that utility. It works with the ones that want to be discarded, all of that. So kind of another piece to bring the whole archetype together. Um, Let's see. Cross is uh, level 4. It special summons itself. Level 2, it special summons itself for free when you discard another fabled monster. And then fabled Chawa is a free 1-star tuner. So... As we didn't go through all of the cards, there's also another one, Nizuchi. That one can get three cards out with I mean, combo it with Crus. So they're all really small, and they could all swarm the board pretty fast, which helps for the synchros. But they don't have a ton of attack, I guess, and they don't really destroy cards. I think that's the difference. Yeah, and their boss monster feels more like a kind of a utility monster. It's kind of like. Um... The when uh, geez, what are they called? Cyber Angels switched because of restrictions and stuff. They had to switch over to uh, Dick, no, uh, the the dragon guy, dragon, yeah, Saphira, yeah. Saphira, thank you. Wow, uh, where it's kind of like your point is to gain uh, card advantage and maybe a bit of tempo instead of to closing out the game, and uh. And that just wasn't quite as strong. <laughs> um, it it obviously still worked for a little bit, but uh, that just wasn't as good as having like a boss boss monster like Dakini was. And so uh, it'll be interesting to see how this works. It seems like a fairly fun and interesting archetype, both to build and play, because you get to do a lot of things. It's always fun when for the player who's doing it for their turn when they get to do a bunch of like discard and this and then summon that and then synchro summon this and then uh, I win somehow. Uh, that's always cool. It right. always sucks when you're on the other side of it, though. <laughs> so, um, 
I guess we'll see if this be, if this sees a lot of play, then we'll probably get tired of it. And if it sees just a little play, then the people who are going to be playing it are going to be having probably a hell of a time. So it's an interesting archetype. Our Curries are the second main archetype. They have a card called Sazank, which sees some type some play, but it's not really a. It's like an annoying deck, but it's not really. It's still a Kara Curry uh, card. Um, this Samu is kind of like Genex Searcher. It could tutor any Kara Curry from the deck to the field. Well, it, su- it summons them to the field when it's destroyed. You could use cards like Powerful Rebirth or Time Machine to bring this back. So then you could just keep doing that type deal. Um, Shinkuro is a tuner that has two lives per turn. It's a two-star tuner that takes two hits to get destroyed. Um, Arakuri Trick House is a trap card that changes their battle positions, I think. Not sure. <laughs> yeah, select. Activate when the battle position of a face of Karakuri control is changed. Select one card on the field and destroy it. So when they get hit, they're going to change position anyways. So then you could destroy the monster that hit it, that be hit destroy destroy it before they actually the attack goes through. So that's what the point of this card is. Um, and cast shed negate the activation of a spell or trap when your car curries in defense mode. The counter trap, okay. So uh, I don't know how this archetype's going to work. Obviously, you need cards from Valiant Souls to make it work. Uh, we should we shall see if it does. <laughs> yeah, it seems. Um... Seems pretty powerful. Uh, kind of the same feel as the as the fables in terms of uh, not obviously exactly how it implements what it's doing, but essentially kind of the same style of deck where you're kind of gaining incremental value. Uh, fables seems a little burstier with it, uh, but it's the same idea where you don't have just like a giant um, you know boss monster so much as you're just kind of gaining value over the course of the game. And uh, it seems a little bit less exciting to me because it doesn't have that yeah. burst potential uh, quite as much. But it my, that might make it better. I don't know because it's it's kind of not as flashy. That might mean that it's not making up for something. Right. Baki mm-hmm. Meru's there's a card called Graviros, which works with plant cards. Uh, I can't. The card's not showing up for me for some reason, but basically what you do is you discard plant monsters, and that that's like the whole Sylvan thing with the carrots and the rose lovers. So maybe there's something there. Hmm. Um, Reckoned hmm. Power is a trap card. Reveal one iron core in your hand. Destroy all face-up spells and traps your opponent controls. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I like um, it. And Hydro Barrier... This card has the ability to negate monster effects every turn. Granted, it stays on the board. So all effect monsters are negated except for Koakimaru uh, monsters. Nice, nice. Powerful effects. Um, that, Like we talked about before, that's kind of what this archetype's about, where it's having um, above-grade effects that require like, this downside of you need to have uh, this Koakumaru, uh, sorry, the core, or reveal a card or whatever, um, or else you lose your guy, or your effect doesn't activate. So it, it seems, I don't know, the other ones had pretty powerful effects too and never saw play, but some of these effects seem a little better to me. And Reckon Power. I mean, you just run three of these, and you would clear their bo- back row, and that's the game, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so seems pretty cool. And... I don't think the Iron Chains are worth talking about at all, but they're they're a mill archetype, but they don't add up because the Repairman is four stars, and then you could bring us a, a three... No, it's a three star. and it, Oh, wait, it's a four star, shoot. And then you bring back the level three, and then it's a seven, and it doesn't match up with six. It's kind of weird, but... Um, Iron Chain Snake is what you want to mill stuff. Poison Chain is what you want to mill stuff as well, so... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's see. I haven't really looked at these guys uh, too much, but, you know, mill effects have seen play in the past, so maybe they will again. The Iron Chain Snake is really weird looking, makes me kind of uncomfortable now that I've pulled it up. Um, But, uh, yeah, I mean, I agree. They're probably not the best. That's why they're getting minor representation here. But I would never count out Mill because we've seen in the past that it's had an impact in this game. 
It's probably going to be like packaged into the current mill or something. I don't know. Something will happen. Yeah, I mean, I think without having looked at them too deeply, the odds are probably that it won't see play because most cards don't see play, but there's always yeah. a chance. Uh, let's quickly go over some other notable cards. Gen, I, uh, Gen X Ally Axel is a card, is a synchro card where you could get discard one card to select one level four or lower machine from your graveyard, special summon it, and its attack is doubled, and but it can't attack directly. So it's like you could do that with the ancient gear soldiers, uh, the knights or whatever. So you could make it a really big guy who is immune to back row. Mm-hmm. And do any of our level four lower machines have piercing? Because I know some. Well, oh, machines... one of the the uh, one of the cyber darks do, I think. Yeah. So that might be something too, where you kind of negate the downside of that. And I'm pretty sure th- these guys inspired um, Lucio from Overwatch. <laughs> this type of this type of uh, artwork. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that type of guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dark Deal. What was Dark Deal? Dark Deal, trap card. When your opponent activates a normal spell card, pay a thousand life points. The effect of that normal spell card becomes your opponent discards one random card. It's a very cool card. Unfortunately, we do not see a lot of normal spells nowadays. Yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> The Doom Dogs were going off. Uh, yeah, I I think it's a cool card. Might might see some play at some point. Uh, I think that it's a decent effect, but like you said, maybe not the most targets right now. Inner Turize isn't really worth talking about, but basically the card loses a thousand attack and loses a level. So this could losing a thousand attacks not too much. It's kind of like Mirror Wall, but uh, reducing a level kind of disrupts the synchro summoning play. So there you go. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. Um, this is like, it's kind of a, it's a reverse of playing an equip card, and so it has the opposite of the same downside, I guess. Uh, you still yeah. require you to do a one or maybe two for one, which is a bummer, but the disrupting the level is uh, interesting upside, so that's kind of cool. The next one is Ally Salvo, a two-star machine. When it's destroyed by battle by a light monster and sent to the graveyard, select two cards on the field and destroy them. We've seen type manipulation with Kinetic Soldier. Uh, we haven't seen DNA surgery used, but this is something you could do to turn everything light and then uh, do stuff, destroy them. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, it kind of requires... Yeah, okay, sure. You you set this and and set their stuff to light and that's that's an interesting little trick. I don't know if it's going to see if it's going to be worth it, but uh, I like the idea. And this is probably one of my favorite cards that probably isn't going to see play. White Veil, normal uh, rarity spell equip. While the equipped monster battles, your opponent cannot activate any spells or traps until the end of the damage step. When an attack is declared involving the equipped monster, face up spells and traps your opponent controls are negated until the end of the damage step, even if this card leaves the field. When the equipped monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can destroy all spells and traps your opponent controls. When this face-up card leaves the spell zone, you're, there, that, that player takes 3,000 damage. <laughs> there's like a million good things going on, but you, there's too many Paleozoic Canadians to make this playable, unfortunately, I think. Yeah. You have to... Like... You would do it before they go into the attack step, which, of course, you would just do, and then they take a, a bunch of damage. But, uh, yeah, it's a fun fun card. It's got the spicy spy character on it, right? So, I don't know who that is. Oh, okay. I thought it was that chick. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I agree. It's kind of fun. It's a ton of words. You're reading, like, a novel on this card. And then when yeah. you get to the end of it, you're like, oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's, got, it's like a, it's a tragedy, right? <laughs> Right. Oh, well. I, I do hope to see this card. I might try to make this card work. That's this. I like this card so much. Okay. Um, <laughs> Duelist Chronicles. Have you completed one playthrough of Duelist Chronicles? I have not. No. Okay. 
Well, I didn't know the whole story, but it is a bit confusing when you face Chaz like three times <laughs> in the whole event. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's what happens. Uh, and it, in, it encapsulates uh, Season 1 of GX, so anything beyond Season 2, when everyone gets brainwashed by the Society of Light, that is not mentioned at all. So, um, And one thing I noticed is that they started using the cutscenes instead of the sprites. Like, they don't make sprites for every play- character. Like, Chumley, they just have, like, a cutscene instead. Yeah, I kind of liked it. It brought it back to the show, to me, a little bit more. Um, I don't know if... You're saying like instead of doing sprites, so it sounds like it was kind of uh, like a, a cheaper or whatever easier. Yeah, like a cut, cut and paste job. Cut and paste job. Yeah. Yeah, but I kind of liked it. I thought it was a good. It's decision. like it's like you're watching the show though. Yeah, they're exactly. Yeah. yeah. So All right. Anyway, it's I actually prefer these events to because I don't have to play at a certain time. I can just. What I have been doing is like while I'm getting dressed in the morning, I'll auto duel all the guys, and then when I get home at night, I auto duel. I hadn't been doing my stuff during the middle of the day, but that meant I could at least rack up kind of the dice and get my free roll every day or whatever, my free uh, lottery pull. And and even though I wasn't really able to play in these last couple of days, I was still able to get some value from this event. So that I, I was I appreciated that during this busy time in my life. Right. Let's go over these cards quickly. They're not that good. Uriah, Lord of Searing Flames. It's basically the Slifer, the Sky Dragon of this of GX. But you send three face-up trap cards you control to the graveyard. Special summon it. It has a thousand attack for each continuous trap card in the graveyard. Each turn, you can target one set spell or trap your opponent controls. Destroy it. So, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a pretty decent card. It, you have to build your deck in a very specific way to be able to get it out, of course, um, because you don't normally run a ton of continuous trap cards. But it seems fairly solid. It's a turn two, uh, 3,000 attacker that also destroys their back row. Uh, my main problem with it is that we only get one. Um, so we can't. it's hard to build a deck around a card that you only get one copy of. I guess you need to... I don't know, use a skill to start with in your hand or, or something if you want to try to build around it. I wish I could build around it because I think it's an interesting card and I think it's not like OP or anything, but it is playable. Um, I just, I'm not sure how easy that'll be with only one copy. Yeah. Elemental Hero Chaos Neos requires the fusion of Neos, uh, Neospatian Dark Panther, Neospatian Glow Moss, 3000 attack, 2500 Defense, it's a very meme card. Um, so you contact fusion them. You don't polymerize them, first of all. So they, all three of them have to be on the board. Once per turn during the end phase, shuffle this card into the extra deck. If you do, set all face-up monsters on the field. So you put them all into face on defense. Once per turn during your main phase one, toss a coin three times. <laughs> three heads, destroy all monsters your opponent controls. Two heads for the rest of this turn. The effects of all face-up monsters your opponent controls are negated. One head, return all monsters you control to the hand it's very unique (laughs) yeah like you said it's pretty memey uh it's super hard to get out and then once you get out you have a one in three chance of just losing the game and a one in three chance of just winning the game and then a one in three chance of i guess you do okay but um it doesn't seem like a very good card for competitive play but i'm sure some people are going to have fun with it so you know that's cool not every card's for every player Winged Krebo level 9, 0 attack and defense during either player's turn. As chain link 3 or higher, you can special summon this card from your hand. Spell cards that have been activated are banished instead of sent to the graveyard. The attack and defense of this card are equal to the number of spell cards in your opponent's graveyard times 500. You can only control one of these. Very interesting just for being a monster that comes out based off chain link 3 or higher. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't think it's actually good, but that is pretty interesting. So it's also like a free level nine, which maybe is relevant uh, for like really high end synchro uh, guys. You can somehow just on your turn inherit, like just chain some stuff um, to itself. Obviously, you have to turn that on self chaining, but you could do that uh, and then get this guy out for free, and then do your Synchro Summon or whatever. So there's a a niche use there. Um, 
and this one is from the lottery as well. So you can get three of them if, for whatever reason, you need it to build a deck around it. So that's kind of cool. Indomitable Fighter Lei Lei, uh, four star Beast Warrior, twenty three hundred attack, zero defense. If it attacks, it's changed into defense mode until the end of the battle phase. At the end of the battle phase, it can't be changed back to attack mode, uh, with except with a card effect. This is exactly like the giant orc, uh, except that has a hundred more attack. So there you go. Yeah, uh, it's probably not a competitive viable card, um, just because we've seen a lot of these types of things, and they're not, and we're not at the phase of the game where we're playing 2,300 attackers that get to attack once anymore. Um, but, you know, there's always a chance, or as we like to say, this is good for kind of newer players and people in the lower end of the ladder. Yep. Protect the Soul Alien is a union card you attach to the Indomitable Fighter. Uh, you could change its battle position. So... It's like the giant orc with the coach goblin, so it's the same exact thing. There you go. Yep, and it will be equally unplayable. It actually seems less playable, <laughs> because <laughs> sometimes you can play the Indominable Fighter just on its own if you just need a beat stick for one turn or whatever, and then this you specifically need to play with the fighter, so uh, bad card, probably not going to see much play, except for on the very bottom end of the ladder, or... I don't know, if some crazy meme deck happens that I'm not seeing right now. And finally, Sabateel, the Philosopher's Stone. If you have a Winged Kribo in your graveyard, pay half of your life points. Add one Polymerization spell or Fusion spell from your deck to your hand, except for Diffusion Wave Motion. <laughs> if this card is in your graveyard, banish three copies of Sabateel, the Philosopher's Stone. From your graveyard, target one monster in the field. It gains attack equal to the attack of the monster on the field, the highest attack. Until the end of the turn. It's a card that exists for the anime, so that's, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think the tutor effect isn't terrible. Like, it's not a terrible card, but there's just better cards that do the various things that you would want it to do. So yeah, there's kind of no point to actually running it. It's mostly just, like you said, for kind of plot reasons. <laughs> But Professor Banner died just to give Jaden this card. You know that, right? Oh my gosh. What are the Avengers going to do now? Ah, oh, God. <laughs> All right. Um, card Trader update. The Card Trader has not been updated in forever. We get one new card, two cards um, we had in the past. Uh, the new card is Convert Contact. If you control no monsters, send two Neospatians... One from your hand, one from your deck to the graveyard, draw two cards. This is this is actually okay for that archetype, because they could make use of them in the graveyard to be special summoned. I mean, to be, um, yeah, to be fused and stuff. So, not the worst card, but it's in a bad archetype that doesn't work. Hopefully this helps it uh, work. Yeah, it'll bring it up to the tier four, maybe. Maybe, yeah. There is a 48-hour sale with reopenable packs... Um, you get to reset it, right? I think that's what it does. Yeah, so the way that it works, if it's the same as last time, I haven't purchased it this time, uh, but last time you buy the packs, and then you open them all up, and then essentially it's it either asks you if you want to keep them, or there's just a button that says, like, re-roll or whatever, reopen. And then uh, if you choose to do that, then you put those 20 packs back into the box, and you shuffle it around, and you get a 20 new packs, and those ones you have to keep. You can only reopen once uh, for buying this. So you get to choose if the 20 you got was good or if you want to uh, kind of risk it and get a different 20 instead. Um, but So that's cool. You know, you have a higher chance of getting if you're looking for a specific card. It's also only $6 for 20 packs. So if you're the type to spend money, this is two weeks in a row that we're saying this, but uh, this is a good deal on, you know, if you're looking for a specific card in a pack, uh, you essentially, it's not the same as getting 40 packs worth of tries, but it's 20, and then if that didn't work, another t attempt at 20. So uh, solid, solid for looking for a certain card, and also just overall pretty decent value on packs. You And you get to roleplay Last Gamble. You're pretty much Last Gambling. Uh, you might get that card, uh, or not, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I bought the Mirror Wall box, the, the set. Nice. Thing. I thought about it, ended up not doing that, but 
um, it was like we said last week is good value. So makes sense. It gave me a third mirror wall, which I won't use because you know I can only fit two. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so we're going to end this episode on upcoming news. Smunky Jaden comes back. Really, it seems like he was just here, but he comes back uh, early January with new cards: Elemental Hero Divine Neos and Elemental Hero Core. Um, a skill that gives you access to Pot of Greed. Okay, sure. Yeah, um, maybe on uh, on Reddit I saw someone data mined that a skill for Jaden that gives him Pot of Greed. Um, I forget exactly what it was, but it was like instead of drawing your normal card for the turn, you draw a pot of greed, which that's lets great. You draw two cards. Um, so you know that's kind of cool. They're thinking that perhaps uh, that will be accessible to players after the Spunky Jaden event, or yeah, I don't know, something like that. So as a reward for it, that's very good. Yeah, um, early January tag duel tournament with the reward uh, Starlight Road, which is uh, the Stardust Dragon. A synergy mid January epic Yami first Yami special event with the mag- magician of dark illusion second anniversary campaign mid January charges back mid January with a new cards new skill obtain Jack Atlas late January and the dual fun as well yep cool lots of good stuff to look forward to uh, in the upcoming new year we're going to end this episode with a shout out to Dual Puzzles, who, were na- who announced he would be stepping away from the scene for a bit to deal with health issues. Um, Dual Puzzles has been one of our most loyal followers, especially on the YouTube scene. He's been talking to um, people about the podcast, getting excited about it. He leaves comments on our YouTube channel. Um, definitely wish you the best. Uh, reach out to us anytime. Anything about health advice to me, uh, let us know. Yeah. Um, good friend of the show. We're wishing you all the best and rooting for you. Yep, we'll see you soon and continue to enjoy the game. Um, so that is it for us today. Uh, anything else you want to add? Uh, no, no, that's it. All right. So listen and subscribe to this podcast anywhere, where everywhere. Um, check out the podcast and more at our website, thedualassessment.wordpress.com. Facebook, facebook.com slash the dual assessment. If you want to help support our work, patreon.com slash dual underscore assessment. Email us with any questions at the dual assessment at gmail.com. Or you can find us on Twitter, dual underscore assessment. Me at Green Ranger CCG. Deck Tech at HS Deck Tech. That's right. Love to hear from you guys there. Right, see you guys. See you next year.